We're in the final game against Kansas. We start panicking a little bit because we had the youngest team in the country. We come out of a timeout late when Kansas is making a little push. And I said, they are going to run the back door play. They're coming out, they're going to drive at you, and they're going back door. We walk out of the huddle. They ran the play, and they beat Michael back door. But he recovered and blocked the ball above the square on the other side of the rim. After he ran down, I'm sorry, coach, sorry. You just blocked the ball that no other human being could block. He used to like sometimes trip over his own feet a little bit. He couldn't shoot. He always fall on the floor. He had problems with his motor. Like he would really trip over his own two feet. I played at first and I was real, real soft. I used to fall on the ground nonstop when I was little. But it just grew on me. Before you know it, in middle school, I fell in love with the game of basketball. He was always a mature kid. He was always two steps ahead of everything. Michael is a very soft-spoken person, not a person of very um, many words. He was always so deep in thought. He was always in tuned because he was forced to deal with emotions that he never knew he had at such an early age. Oh, my dad passed away when I was little. I was real young. It bothered Michael quite a bit, and you know, um, he was not an outwardly person, but you could see where it clearly bothered him. I believed in quality time. It was always quantity time because we were always together. He has always had an issue with sharing me with anybody. Every night before Michael went to bed, I would talk to my boyfriend on the phone. And Michael started saying things like, oh, he's probably ugly, mom, hang up or whatever. It's my mom, it's my sister, like, no, like, you're not touching her. So I said to Michael, do you want to meet him? And he said, yeah, so we met at this park. And it was a, a long game as opposed to a date. Vin extended his hand, and I was like, Michael, this is Mr. Vince, and Mr. Vince, and this is Michael. He didn't really want to shake my hand. All right, hold on. And he went to go shake Vinny's hand, and Vince said, man, I'm not shaking yet. <laughs> so the whole day was more like Kung Fu. He tried to kick me and kick me and kick me, and the rest of the whole evening, we were playing Kung Fu up and down the street. Ever since then, man, it's been all love. Michael came home one day after school with a permission slip and asked if he could play basketball in a league. I was never surprised with any of his growth, development, success. His drive and will to want to get better, like at 12, 11, 13 years old. He wanted a basketball court in front of the house. Summer times was all basketball. When I had my court, it was like all my friends would be in my house. They would just come over and uh, hoop all day long. Like, we talking trash, getting in fights and all that stuff. He was in eighth grade, and I was in ninth grade. And I was like, yeah, it's no competition. Like, it's no way I shouldn't even be on the court with this guy. I remember one night dropping him off, and his coach said, Cindy, you can't drop him off and leave anymore because this guy is coming into the gym to watch him play. When you talk about Jersey and New York City and Philadelphia, that is a hotbed of basketball. A lot of people always wanted Michael to play with them, be on their team, and everybody was coming to us. Can he play? Can he play with us? Can he play with us? He could have gone to any high school pretty much in America that he wanted to. If he's playing with better people, not just confined, I thought, you know, that board his horizon. At least it gave, it gave me a measuring stick. And then Michael made a comment, oh, well, I like to go up north, maybe St. Pat. I had no idea what a basketball powerhouse was until he got to St. Pat's. Michael, he had a great combination of picking a place that's going to develop him and just a tireless work ethic. We talked to Michael and told Michael, well, this is what it's going to take, you know. It's going to be a whole lot of commitment on your part. The commute was an hour and a half every day. I thought it was like a little nuts. I'll get up at 5 a.m. every morning, pack my bags and get on the train and go to school. For him to get out of his bed at 3 or 4 in the morning and take a train for a couple of hours to get to school. You're going to have to do school or you'll be tired. And then after that, then you're playing basketball. Then you're coming back home. I don't think many people could have done that for four years, except a kid like Michael. I just took it seriously each and every day. I have a gift and I realized that. 
early on, Michael went public as an eighth or ninth grader and said, I want to play for Cal. When Michael locks in on something, that's basically what he focused on. It was a rumor out when I was a freshman that he was coming to the game that day. I'm warming up and I see him on the baseline. I'm like, oh snap, Cal at my game. <laughs> a year later, he offers me. I picked Kentucky because it was a family there. Then when we saw the team, the group of guys who we thought was going, it, it, it was like Christmas. Michael came right in and fit right in and everybody embraced him. I knew it was gonna be good coming in. It was a young team. I tell him right up front, this would be the hardest thing you ever do. You're not gonna score 30 a game because we got too many guys. He's one of those young people that understood the influence he could have on other people. Here, Michael started a breakfast club and he had guys come over and lift at 6 a.m. Well, we lost to Indiana. It was our first loss and I was hurt. I started this club and it's a breakfast club. When we'll wake up at five, we gotta work up. And at six, we'll get on the court. And then eight is class at eight o'clock and that's how we did it. It worked, man, it all helped. He said before he went to Kentucky, I'm gonna win this whole thing. I thought Michael was the ingredient that we're winning this game. We're winning the national title. All the parents sat together and they won and confetti is falling and the parents stood there looking at each other like, did they just win this game? It felt so fake and like a dream. He was the youngest college player and he was drafted number two. What? And he had a little hitch in his shot. He was still drafted number two. You know why? Because of his heart, because he was kind, because he was an unbelievable teammate, because he would do whatever it needed to be done to win the game. We won the national title, in my opinion, because of that.